I am married to a pastor and he has a ton of examples of times where he sat down on an airplane or a local watering hole and struck up a conversation with someone around him. He's an outgoing guy who easily makes small talk. He honestly does love to hear about things going on in people's lives. But in situations like this, after a certain amount of time, people will undoubtedly say to him, so what do you do for a living? And when he says, well, I'm a pastor, he'll tell you that the tone shifts. In moments like this, my husband Hans has said, it's like he can see people's wheels turning with ridiculous thoughts. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I don't know how to talk about the Bible, which he will for sure mention, right? What if he asks about my church? And I haven't actually been in years. People ask themselves unfair questions. They have unfounded worries. How do I act if there are things I don't know, or I think I don't know, about church and faith? What happens if these churchy people actually know my story? What will change when they meet the real me? When it comes to creating hospitable places in our lives or in our churches, I think this is something we all have to wrestle with. I can promise you that my husband, the pastor, and me, the church worker, we have stories too. They are not full of sunshine and roses. There's plenty of doubt in our stories. There's plenty of hurt. We have both experienced it and we've caused it. We're not somehow immune or separated from it simply because of our professions. But when we're all figuring out how to build a bridge with other people, I think as Christians, we have to hold up a mirror sometimes. How can we take our faith practices, our church traditions, into a public setting without casting a shadow of judgment or hurt? How can we translate faith into an airplane conversation that could be somewhat normal? Whichever seat you happen to be on on this hypothetical airplane, I think when we fail to recognize that people all have a story, it compromises our ability to have a relationship. In Acts chapter 6, the disciples are at a point in their ministry of teaching people about Jesus, of spreading the gospel, and they're tired. It's a lot of work in their community. It's really growing. And we learn that the Hellenistic Jews, those who spoke Greek, they're a little frustrated with the Hebrew-speaking Greeks. Part of their community story involved a group of vulnerable people, the widows among them. And in their Hellenistic community, these women, these widows, they were getting neglected when it came to the distribution of food. So it's like these people said to the disciples, hey, your way of church might be working for you, but it's not working for us in this very important way. So the 12 disciples, they call everyone together for a community meeting. And they admit, you're right. We do need to be focused on this mission of teaching and preaching. But they say, we see you. We hear your story. So let's figure out how we can partner on this. Our preaching and our teaching doesn't have to be the only way to be the church. So how could we learn from one another's stories and work together? We read in verse 3. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task. And everyone is happy about this plan. They look to the community and they find more leaders from within it. And we hear in verse 7, the word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples increased greatly. They tried it and it worked. And what I want you to notice about this particular story in Acts, especially when it comes to the idea of hospitality, is how faith was spread in an ordinary way. It wasn't just through the 12 disciples, those who had uh, gifts of prayer or speaking or interpreting teachings. It was through people who may not have had all the right things to say about faith, but who had the time to notice when people were slipping between the cracks. People who said, these women have a story too, and we are committed to finding a way to feed them. That ministry of the seven Greek-speaking Jews, of the homegrown talent, you might say, it was just as valuable as that of the disciples who had known and lived with Jesus before he died. So ask yourselves, how can all of us give credit to one another's stories? How can we recognize that faith doesn't have to be about the right way of doing things or finding the best answers within the Bible? How can it 
how can we all realize that it's in the ordinary, the everyday ups and downs of life, that is where Jesus shows up. That is where our relationships can grow with one another and with the God who loves the ordinary you who has a story and the ordinary me who has one too.